What's up everybody and welcome back to another episode of this F1 2010 Let's Play Career Mode on Expert, the 12th episode on my home Grand Prix in Spa. And I've been talking about this for a while, about the Lotus contract and letting it hang for a couple races. And I'm going to take it. It's a number one driver position, exactly what I want. And, you know, six and a half million a year. I could have probably gotten a better offer, but since you can't do shit with money anyway in this game, I figured, hey, let's just take it and uh, be number one driver next year. I'm going to be able to set the R&D uh, track, um, you know, aggressive or not. And here, look at the standings. 27 points behind Mark Webber. Full win and then some. Sebastian Vettel is not that far behind, but not too worried about him. Uh, what is it? Button in four? Yep, button in four in Hamilton. Uh, Lotus still in third. So let's see if we can hold off uh, Ferrari, if Yarno truly would actually do something. And my home race coming up. Spa Francorchamps, that's right. A uh, place known for uh, pretty much being the most awesome racetrack in the world. One of the most classic uh, F1 Grand Prix, Bar Monaco. And it's a track I know well. Uh, I've raced a lot on it, so didn't need a lot of practice. Although, I needed some practice laps to get used to the Lotus being a dog of a car. Uh, this is my time down on Prime. Started raining apparently at the end. I didn't really um, do a lot of laps, but I had to do like 10 laps or something just to get a feel for the Lotus because I had a setup for uh, online races where the cars are set equal. And, you know, I'm a full almost five seconds down to what I can do in a normal car. And it's really just on this track that I know how much of a dog the Lotus really is. Seriously, I mean, I haven't played, you know, I've, I've played a multiplayer races, uh, you've seen the vid maybe, uh, which I posted before this, so I kind of got used to having a good car again, and now I jump, I've jumped back into that Lotus, and I was like, oh my god, this is a dog, I just had to change my setup, you know, the gearing went down and stuff, I'm totally destroying Yarno, Jesus Christ, and it looks like he's gonna get driver too, I mean, wouldn't you boot someone out that gets dominated like that in the championship, I want Heike. I like Heike more, so I tweaked my setup a bit, I put it from one in the back in two with a good car, but I had to tweak it, there was just no freaking way I uh, could drive with my normal setup, the gearing was just all wrong, I mean, basically you'll notice this if you pay attention, I just used a quick engineer setup and then just do little tweaks, not a lot, here I just put the sixth gear a bit higher, you'll see why, uh, when I'm coming up to Eau Rouge, um, I felt uh, I was too slow on the 7th gear, too low on the rev, so I figured I was just gonna extend the 6th gear a bit. And it seems to be working quite alright. We are for the hot lap on Spa Francorchamps. Down the main straight into La Source, break at about the 100 meter mark, get down to 2nd or 1st. Hit that apex, I completely miss it here. I did a much cleaner lap before, you see I'm already P3. But um, this one turned out to be the faster one. I don't know why, I just was attacking like crazy I guess. So here up to Eau Rouge. Try to get these curbs, don't cut them too much, just get the, get the curbs, don't go on that uh, green on the side. Ease it out to the outside, maximize your speed, make sure your gearing is set up right so you don't max out too early. This is pretty good, you break just behind where the curbs start, down the third, hitting the apexes, feathering the throttle again, up to fourth, easy on the throttle, just maximize the exit here again. And into Bruxelles corner, very tricky. Uh, you gotta pump the brakes here, don't slam them, but pump them gently and then drop down from 3 to 3rd at the end. Up to 3rd, leave the gas and then back on it right away. We can take this differently again in multiplayer, but not here. So at the 50 meter mark, you drop down one gear, you stay off the throttle, then you get back on. Again, a bit sloppy here. Straight back on the throttle though, into the finding corners, I think. Down a gear, again missing an apex. Like I said, not a very clean lap, but the faster one that I did. Again, very careful in here, you may spin out, get down to third, easy on the throttle, don't want to run too wide. This is a bit of a mistake in the game, um, you see the real car is going much further. Hamilton blocking me, thank you very much. So down to the back, sort of straight into the Blanchiment corner, coming up. Oh my god, Weber again blocking me, that's Blanchiment, another one, Vettel blocking me, thank you very much. And still manage a better time, break at the 120 meter mark, pump the brakes, easy on the downshift easy on the acceleration out of here and that's a full lap of uh, Spa Francorchamps for you guys here 148, 935 third position, very close to uh, the other ones and I'm very happy look at Weber, he's only in P5 so he messed up his qualifications so happy with that because I need to get back in contention here, I need a good result on Spa um, AI isn't too fast on Spa so I had good hopes, I know the track pretty well and everything so yeah, good hopes and look at that, another rain race, two rain races in a row 
What are the chances? Didn't have any rain before. Now we got two rain races. So I'm tweaking the setup and I mess up a bit. I tweak the angles of the front wing and the back wing. And I set the pressure to medium. Stuff you probably should do when you're uh, driving in the rain. But I forget to adjust my uh, gearing. Should have put shorter gearings because uh, I'm going to have more drag, less acceleration out and stuff. Because you need to be more careful on the throttle. So that's going to bug me throughout the race that um, I never really max out 7th gear or anything. Made a big mistake there. Um, always, if you tweak your wing settings, tweak your gearing as well because you won't be able to max out your gears. It'll be all wrong, all wrong. So let's go for our little race here on spa franca -Champ. Like I said, I'm so going to see the Grand Prix. I haven't decided uh, what tickets I'm going to buy though. I think I'm, think I'm going to go for the silver ones. There's bronze, gold and silver. Um, silver and gold. So P3. Weber in P5, my rival. And you've seen this question asked 5 million times on the forum. If you see a blue dot on the minimap, that's the rival you have selected. I don't see how people miss it, but a lot of people seem to have missed it. So the blue dot on your thing is your rival. Here we are at the start. Good start for me. Nobody's running away here. Pretty good start going to the outside and then trying to dive in the inside here. And it works out. Vettel and Alonso go wide. Small touch of contact maybe with Vettel, but I get through. And uh, looks like Weber had an incident. Look at the minimap. Weber is holding up a lot of people here, losing a gap already. We do have Alonso in front of us, down to Ohush for the first time. He's staying in sixth because I messed up my gearing. And I realize this already now. Should have totally done this. And this is looking good. Uh, Weber lost spots at the start. So I'm definitely going to be able to call some points back. Alonso breaks like a madman. He's scared like a pussy boy, Mr. Eyebrows. Very slow here. I'm pushing him, pushing him, and he leaves a gap on the inside. One wheel on the grass, but a legitimate move, I must say. And, well, that was basically it for excitement in the Spa Grand Prix. Had one or two little spins, but uh, the AI is horrifyingly slow on Spa. I wasn't even trying. You know, just, I was getting careless and not paying attention. This, uh, this is the first lap, and you'll see me already pull up a huge gap to Alonso. Didn't have any trouble catching him up. So the only exciting part here is, uh, well, me winning and um, Weber losing losing ground here. He must have had a very bad exit out of La Source, the hairpin. So, yeah, not much you can learn from this vid. I'm driving pretty crap in the rain because I don't even need to push. So I'm just focusing on staying in the car on the road. And here I do mess up a little bit. Oh, yeah, no worries. Yeah, it's just too slow. Already had a big gap, so I had a... <laughs> Pretty scary slide here. Lucky I didn't went into the gravel too much because that would have slowed me down a lot. But, you know, even then, still have a second ahead of Alonso. And it's probably going to be like a full second by the time. Especially here, Blanchimont. They're very slow through this. And again, not paying attention. Not taking into account. You can't take it flat out like that in the rain. Just need to brake a bit earlier for the chicane. Make sure you don't spin. There's a little bump at the end of that chicane. You guys really need to worry about them. So I'm going to be cutting a lot in this vid. Just because there was nothing to see, really. I don't want to bore your guys' brains out with, um, you know, here we're up, another lap gone. We're uh, jumped two laps ahead. There was just not much to see. I'm just seeing this because here we see Weber is in P13. So that's why I cut to this little vid. So Weber is having a horrifying race. And my teammate truly in the points for the first time this year. Might actually have two Lotuses in the points. So looky here. So, you know, it's good for good for old Yarno. Old Yarno truly. I don't know what he's still doing in F1. I guess he's working on developing the Lotus and it's good to have an experienced driver in there. But I, I don't know. I think that seat could have gone to a hungrier man. They already have pretty good experience with uh, Heike Kovalainen. And he's still pretty young. But he's got um, you know, some good McLaren experience under his belt. So I'm sure dude knows how to, how to set up a car and shit. So... You know, I'm a bit you know, torn about truly still being at Lotus. Because I really love Team Lotus. Um, thinking they're going to have a cracker of a season. I mean, they're not going to win it. You know, let's not be too over-optimistic. But um, they look to be doing all the right things, man. They uh, had some cool stuff on their car. It's really a new evolution model. Didn't just... Uh, you can clearly see that their last car was just getting it out onto the grid. And this one, they really made like a lean, mean racing machine, you know. Lean, green racing machine, as they say on their uh, YouTube channel. If you don't have, um, haven't seen the Lotus YouTube channel, it's My Team Lotus. And they put on all kinds of like short behind the scenes vids, like in Valencia testing. They had like, I don't know, one of the pit crew or somebody just filming stuff. Uh, Heike coming into the pit, checking out his cockpit and stuff. Short little vids, but uh, 
fun to see a little behind the look, behind the scenes look on uh, F1 crews. So be sure to check this out. Valencia test is over. McLaren has been released. Man, the McLaren does look pretty sweet. Lots of innovations looks like uh, coming from the McLaren crew. crew. Um, strange way to have the air intakes up top. They have two air intakes, and of course there's the L-shaped side pods. And here you see a massive gap to Massa. I'm not even trying. You can see I'm driving pretty sloppy, braking very early. So one more skip ahead to the final lap. Figured I would at least show you that. Uh, at near the end, uh, Alonso was gaining up on me, and again, oh, gets almost hit the wall there. That would have been stupid. But like I said, not focused. Pretty much just boring my brains out. I'm sorry I can't bring you a more exciting race, but um, you know, blame Codemasters for it. Not my fault. <laughs> and I want this win, especially now with Weber out of the points apparently. If I get 25 points, I'm right back on his ass for the championship. Uh, so yeah, times were tumbling down again. Uh, even though the track's still bloody wet, no dry in line, still raining. But um, like someone mentioned in the last comments, it might have to do with uh, the wets getting up to temperature. It is true that it takes a while for the wets to get up to temperature. But I think I already heard Rob say that around lap 4. Like, your tires are now at the optimal temperature. But it's only around lap 7 or something that the lap times really started coming down. So I think it's just a little bit of wonkiness again with how um, the dynamic weather is working. It looks good and stuff, but it's, the feel doesn't always correspond with uh, what you see on the track. I mean, sometimes, like you saw in Budapest, my last quali uh, lap was done on uh, slicks. While, you know, the track was still pretty damp. It was only just the beginning of a dry line. Um, it was worse than what the, the real F1 dudes did in Brazil. There, there was a definite dry line there. So, you know, like you see here, three seconds ahead, but I'm kind of pushing it here. I figured I'm going to try to put a decent lap time on the board, at least 158. It's, it's quite horrifying, even in the rain. But, um, yeah, sorry, I had to cut and paste. I didn't do anything funky. I just wanted to spare you guys the boredom I had to sit through of this uh, spa race. It's a real shame. I really like this track, but it's a shame I couldn't bring you a better race. Um, just that first overtaking moves, which weren't even that spectacular. And that's it, we got the win in Spa! Whoop. Let's see where Weber ended up though, we were curious about that. Did he claw himself back into the points or not? Great Alonso job. came in P2. Great job. What a win. Congratulations. 25, points. 25 points! That's right Rob, I got 25 points. Alonso, Vettel, Massa, no, no Weber in the points! P14, oh my god! Major disaster race for Weber. Don't know what happened to him, but that was not cool! Hamilton in P18, Button way down on 13. Wow, looks like a lot of people uh, took points, including Trulli, Hockenberg, Sutil, Schumacher in P5, Fell P4. Nice, look at that! Yeah, I, I held on the second Rob, but you know, isn't it more important to think I closed in to two points of P1? Hell yeah! Ferrari did a good business though too with their uh, two podiums, two and three. I'm gonna be flanked by uh, Fernando Alonso and uh, Felipe Massa, who poor fella first started a test and his car <laughs> gets on fire. He done like 12, 12 laps and his new car is on fire while Alonso was like, yeah, the car is feeling great and so reliable. Alonso gets in the car, BLOOM! <laughs> Apparently it was just an oil leak, but that's what they're saying, you know, who knows what really happened. I'm sure they're not going to tell everything. So here's the interview for the race winner in Spa. Challenging enough in itself, but when the weather turns against you, that's one tough day at the office. How did you deal with conditions out there? I just drove my heart out. And your teammate also making it into the points. The team have had a successful weekend. Seriously, the constructors. My teammates scored one point. First point of the whole season. And I'm going to take the constructors. Seriously, Holly? Seriously? And yeah, this question is because Spa is like a glamour race. And I guess maybe because it's my home race, but I don't think so. I think everyone who wins at Spa gets this question because it's one of the season jewels. Which is Abu Dhabi as well and Singapore, which you know, cool tracks, but I wonder how much they had to pay to get in the game. And I've achieved all my season's objectives, uh, so the team said objective for the season, but I don't really care because I'm already number one, number one, and I'm very close to Mr. Weber. I'm coming for you, you Aussie bastard. Uh, have more crap races like that. Next up, Monza. I like that track. I'm pretty good at it. Maybe not in the dog Lotus because you need high top speed. So um, until next time, please like, comment, and subscribe. And peace out.